If a brother or sister among you is, isn't properly clothed and they don't have their daily food and you say to them, goodbye, have a blessed day, be filled and be warmed, but you don't actually do anything for the needs of their body? Well, what good is that? You'll find that in James chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Many Christians haven't been properly taught, or better yet, shown what it means to follow Jesus, to be his disciple, to follow in his footsteps, or as the popular saying goes, to be following so closely behind him, our Rabbi Jesus, that we are covered or caked in his dust. What we see him do, we do. What we hear him say, we say. It's like the Apostle Paul told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, or in some translations it's tacked on to the end of chapter 10, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And it all starts with something as simple as a cold cup of water in his name. Maybe taking the time to actually pray with somebody that needs that prayer. In downtown Manchester, Tennessee, at the Rotary Park Amphitheater, they're having a one-day event called uh, Hope and Family Fest. And this is to raise funds for an even bigger event that's coming up in October called One Day of Hope. And One Day of Hope sounds very exciting. In fact, I want you to hear more about it from one of the board of directors, Mr. Ray Markram, who is an infectious follower of Christ in his own right. So come on, let's head over to the Hope and Family Fest and hear more about One Day of Hope. Follow me. Four years ago, uh, Kenny McNatt, who's the pastor at Canvas Community Church, came up with the idea that the body of Christ, not just one church, but the body of Christ in Manchester and Coffee County needed to uh, make an effort to reach out to people, uh, particularly working poor, folks that often are disenfranchised, not just from church, but, uh, but from uh, many of the services that others have, health care, uh, clothing, and, and even food. And uh, so he, he came up with this idea of one day of hope. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we joined forces with an organization called the Convoy of Hope. And that's an organization that helps communities do this kind of event. Okay. So uh, they came on board for a couple of years just to get us started, and then they move on to other towns. So uh, we're now moving on with the One Day of Hope. We started with about five or six churches the first year, about 18 or so the next year, 22 last year, and we should have about 40 this year. Wow, and what does it look like when you have 20, 40 congregations working together for a common cause? It looks like the kingdom of God. Amen! <laughs> so what, what are some of the things that are accomplished? Well, it, uh, last year we were able to see uh, around 4,100 people came through the through the gates in about a four hour period. Wow. And uh, we were able to provide uh, each of the of them with a bag of, of food. Uh, we provided about 2,300 families with clothing. We had about 1,600 people who went through our medical and dental tents. Wonderful. And a lot of that medical care, of course, can't be done right there. The physicians and dentists uh, continued that care, gave them cards, saw them later in their practices. So, And we had folks there who could help folks. A lot of times they don't know what programs are available that can assist them, particularly if they have children. Uh, we were able to help a lot of folks with that. We had a job fair kind of thing to help folks get a job. Uh, haircuts, a lot of times that's a helpful thing with, yes. with work and so and uh, family portraits. You know, Ray, this is sounding a lot like something that Jesus said. I was hungry. I was hungry and you <laughs> fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick or in prison and you visited me. And uh, we, our prayer tent is there. And most of our volunteers for that are people just like Rob. I know he testified about that today. There's people that just stand there and say, is there anything we can do for you? Would you like us to pray for anything? And amazingly, so many people, we had about nearly 3,000 people ask for a prayer. It is amazing what happens when you ask people if you can pray for yeah. them, isn't it? And and Rob, Rob was telling a story about how a lady said, I sure would, said I was just diagnosed with stage four cancer. So uh, though he said, it changed my life. 
changed my life about what I could do in the kingdom, you know. Amen. And and it didn't have to be a big deal thing. It's just being available. You what know? kind of resources are needed to pull off an event such as that? Well, number one, churches working together, people. Last year we had like a thousand volunteers, which was amazing, and that's great. From 22 churches, probably more like 30 churches. And the Friday night when our volunteers met, all worshiping together, that was amazing. And that, that was just a sweet, sweet time. I, I think God really was blessed by that and, uh, and blessed us in turn. And there was such a great spirit uh, of working together. And uh, so that's amazing. We, uh, we need people uh, to give clothing, to give uh, uh, their time, of course, and then be willing to, to help us in other ways, like chairs and tables and things, and churches do that. But we have to raise somewhere between thirty-five dollars and $40,000 each year, pretty well to, to put everything together and, and to pull it off. And uh, so that's been my primary function this year, to work on the fundraising. And we've got these great volunteers that take care of each of the other areas. About how many people does it does it take to sit on a, a do you have a board of directors? We do. We do. We have a nine-member board. And, and it's not a real big official thing. It's like everybody has input. We felt like we needed this year to get a group of people that would say, hey, we're going to be responsible. We're going to make sure this thing happens each year. You know, we're going to pull together. And they're all from different churches. So it's, it's just a, a great board and a number of other people that act almost like board members because they do so many things. I think a thing that feels so good about it is so many people do a small amount and amazing things happen, how God uses that. It's just uh, an amazing event. It's, it's not only reach people and giving us contacts that churches can follow up and help people and, and 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 help people we didn't know or we didn't know their problems but it also puts a new face on the body of Christ to our community uh, a face of love hopefully. now who what church gets the credit for all of this no church we're not allowed to mention church As a matter of fact something Chris uh, our, our leader the past couple of years Chris uh, loves to have everybody yell out the name of their church on our volunteer meeting. Everybody yells at the same time. And he says, you know, I really couldn't hear you. How about if all of you yelled the name Jesus? And everybody does. <laughs> he said, now I heard you really clear. So that's sort of the spirit. And, and the other spirit is that we want anyone who comes through the gates to be an honored guest and be treated that way with respect and with care and to know that that God loves them and in turn God's people love them and and that's that's a message we don't often get a chance to deliver to our community and so uh, that's one reason I'm in love with this I think it's one of the purest things I've ever been a part of what's the name of that organization again that they may somebody is out there watching saying we need this right and Convoy of Hope is wonderful their organization you can google them and they will uh, uh, they'll be glad to help you get started with this. They do programs all over the world, and they're a wonderful organization. Uh, we now, they've taught us how to do this, and they've moved on. We now partner with a local group called Good Samaritan that does feeding a feeding program in our county, and so it's helping to bring greater visibility to what they do, and then they're helping us certainly to uh, pull off this event. And how do people here in Coffee County get in touch and help support? Well, we have a website, southerntennesseeoutreach.com is our website. We have a Facebook page, One Day of Hope 2015, and uh, then uh, uh, there are phone numbers posted there and, and uh, just a way to get a hold of us. Our post office box, if you would like to help, is P.O. Box 99, Manchester, Tennessee, 37349-0099, and we would love to have others be a part of this. And we would love to see it spread to other cities, too. Well, thank you very much for your time and for all the information. It's an exciting thing to be a part of. Thank you. I appreciate it. You are tuned in to the GCT Network. This is your Great Commission. This is your Great Commission transmission. At GCTNetwork.com. This is your Great Commission transmission. This is your Great Commission transmission.